Okay, so this is the volume two video for the pistol offense. Hopefully you watched the, the first video on pistol, which was the pretty basic offense. Um, not a whole lot of options, and I didn't get into a lot of the reads in that video. And in this one, I wanna show a little bit more of what you can do with it and how it's not so much just a continuity offense, but that it allows um, guards especially to make some reads on their own. Um, I was asked by some some viewers about the personnel that you need to run pistol and you know I don't think you need to have four outstanding ball screen reading guards to to run this um, you need to have ball handling guards and guards that can make decisions but you know great shooters and great ball handlers both can can function within this offense Okay, so first let's go back and look at what some of the basics of pistol are. So at its core, let's back that up here. At its core, you're talking about four guards around one post player whom you can't see right now because of this officials on the way. So you've got guards in the slot and a guard in the deep corner and then guards on the other side. She should be a little bit more in the corner and this player is in the slot. So we want to have really good spacing. Our post player is high. So we're going to do handoff immediately into a ball screen. And what happens here, unless the team wants to switch and really not let you turn the corner, and there are counters to that, but it forces a lot of switches. Uh, and you're going to get a lot of threes, drives, and if you have a good pick and roll post player, you're going to get that too. So here's your basic action. You got your handoff right into this ball screen, and it's going to force a switch. And we're going to get it inside here. Now, normally, we're going to want something to go on on the weak side of the floor. Sometimes we do that, sometimes we don't. Uh, this was a pretty high-level team. Most of these kids are going to be playing um, Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three NAI basketball uh, next couple years. So here we are again. There's our handoff. Back this up again. Some of these got cut kind of kind of close here. So there's your handoff right into your screen. They mess this up. We get an easy roll, and you'll get that quite a bit. All right, on this one, and we like to do this a lot. So we've already handed the ball off. And when we hit the roller, we do a lot of short rolls out of pistol. So it might not be the deep roll layup, but you see here, we throw it kind of short. And what that's going to do is, because again, they switched, you're going to get help from somewhere. Sometimes the help's going to come from this corner where you just kick it out. This time it comes from the low man on the weak side who's you know playing help defense and that's going to lead to this and we would get this quite a bit as well all right there's another short roll and here's just what i just what i mentioned here so you're going to get we've done our handoff there's our screen and we short roll right here this time the help comes from the corner and she was so good at just kicking that right back out and again we get those kick outs a lot there's the handoff there's the screen Again, they don't really know how to guard this. And if you notice, a lot of teams are going to take this defender and put her here in help. So that skip to the corner over here will sometimes be open as well. But we come off, good read, draw the foul. All right. Again. We did the handoff on this one, but she waited. The screen was late, but still, you're still going to get this from time to time. Just that simple spread ball screen formation. And there's another roll. Because, you know, we had four, you know, really good guards on the floor quite a bit with this team. And they were really concerned about them, which really freed up our post player. Coming off now, let's... Here's a couple of these, and I didn't show enough of this in the first pistol clip. And this is this is one of my favorite moves to do with this offense, is once they get used to this, the guard just keeping it and going. They think the handoff is coming, they were going to switch, they get confused, and we score. Okay, now this one, 
This is something else that wasn't on the first video. Um, this is called a push through. So let's get back here again and we'll stop. So the guards over here, we got a guard in this corner. This guard was in the slot and she was in the corner. Anytime this guard, if she doesn't want to just dribble here, she can dribble this way and push this guard through. And when she, when she gets pushed through, that opens up a lot of really interesting possibilities. She can just cut all the way through to the corner. She can cut through and post up if she has an advantage. But whatever she does, it has to be a sprint, and you'll see why. So here's our push through. She comes out. She keeps it. And now had this player stayed in help, she's got to be shot ready. She doesn't, and she goes on and scores. But that keeper is very, very effective. And there it is again. You fake that ball screen there and you go to the basket. I love to give the players the freedom to do this stuff. And she was great at it. So on this one, we do our keeper, but she does a keeper into a three that she thinks she's going to drive. She pulls up and hits the shot. And there it is again. Keeping it and driving and scoring. Give your players the freedom to do it. There's the push through. There's the keeper. That's great stuff. And those aren't, you know, called plays. Uh, anytime I might yell push through every once in a while, but I'm leaving this up to the players. You know, they're making their own decisions on the floor, which is one of the reasons that I like the offense so much is that it's not necessarily, you know, overly predictable like your typical continuity. But we have a basic, you know, pattern, I guess, you know, the handoff ball screen and then make reads out of that. But there's a lot of things we can do. Now, these options here, and we got this an awful lot is right here on these on these back doors. Teams started to overplay the handoff, and that's the counter. You know, we got this over and over again. There's another one. Anytime that player wants to back door, they can. Because teams will start to get aggressive on it, just like that. Or, or they might want to trap that. Um, and that's something that you have to teach and put into the offense. All right. Now we're going to talk about the throwbacks, which is another big part of this that I like quite a bit. So we come off. We've done the handoff right into the screen. Um, again, this weak side, there should be stuff going on over here. Um, sometimes we would get lazy and just watch. But every time that we do our handoff and she uses the screen, we either wanted to do an interchange on the weak side, set a down screen, or the player in the slot loop behind for a shot or a drive. Sometimes we did it, sometimes we didn't. But here is a really good example. A lot of teams will do this. You know, anytime that there's a ball screen, there'll be a hedge. So, I mean, yeah, you can attack the hedge player's foot and try to attack, that's fine. But the easiest thing for us to do was to throw it back here, either for a shot, a post feed, or if they screw this up like they do, both players go after the roller it leaves our shooter wide open. All right, handoff. Right back to her and drive. I'm, I'm a big fan of that. Here again, they tried to trap the handoff, throw it right back to our shooter in the corner. Throw back, and that could have been a post up. You'll notice, you know, at least, at least I've noticed, a lot of post players you know, they get into the habit of, well, I'm just going to be a screener. She should have just stayed right here because if she comes out to guard, we got to be able to throw it to her. But she was coming out to set another screen. But thankfully, we got a really good shooter there who knocked that down. So these throwbacks are, are really good. All right. This is, that, this is what we call a split. So you're going to get the handoff. And instead of using the ball screen, you're going to refuse the ball screen, which happens a lot if the player guarding the girl that gets the handoff tries to do this. So she's already received the handoff, and she's trying to, you know, she's trying to say, hey, look, you're not going to turn, almost like she's icing this ball screen. So this player has to be able to cross over and drive this gap. And it's either going to be a drive and a layup, a kick out, or maybe even a post feed to the roller. And she draws a foul. And there's another one. This is stuff that you have to teach your players. You know, you don't have to fight that pressure. Like right here. Great move. 
you know, don't let them, don't let them spread you all the way out. Because they think you're going to try and flip the floor and you can just reverse it. Now, this is our elbow series. This was not talked about at all in the first video. And it's something that we got a lot better at as the summer rolled on. So this would be a call either by me or by our point guard. And she would just yell elbow. So what that's going to mean is this post player, back it up a little bit, this post, this, this post is going to pop out. And from here, we have action on both sides of the floor. Um, I like down screen. Sometimes we would flare, um, which is what this is. If you notice, our guard in the corner now is going to come up and set a flare screen for her, and she decides just to curl this. And this is just a read. And that's just outstanding. Here we go again on elbow. And if you have a player in that spot, and we had a couple that we used, I mean, this is a great way to take advantage of what you feel is a mismatch. And this girl was a pretty good driver. We just felt that any time that, that we threw it to her there, you know, we're, we're setting screens here to occupy both sides. So we just felt she could take her player to the basket. And she drew a ton of fouls doing that. And she was great at it too. Uh, she, was, she was one of our guards who was great at attacking. We just called elbow and let her go to work. They come and help. We get a three. Elbow again. And if you see this girl here, um, she was a really good low post player for this team. Uh, but we knew she was guarding her, and she can make she can shoot as well. So she had to make a decision. Is she going to stay back and let her shoot, or is she going to kind of play it mid, which she does, and she's just not able to guard her? Back in elbow again. Going to work with a good player. It's just a way to just, just to let a good player kind of do her thing. It's still part of pistol, though. A great way just to kind of isolate a player. And if it doesn't work, you still have kickouts. Now, same thing here. We saw a matchup. And this was kind of late in the game, and we were up. And we saw her get matched up with her. And we knew that there's no way that was going to work. So we just called uh, elbow for this player. And let her let her work. They're occupying. They're moving around, and for her, that's too easy. All right, now we're coming off, and we got we got this a ton in pistol. Um, if you've got shooters, I I just I I love the offense. If 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 you have shooters, so we're coming, and you you're you're going to get those threes quite a bit with with teams not sure how they're going to guard this. She did a great job here on this one. Um, you know, normally we like to come off that handoff at full speed, but she took her time on this and she had an open look and knocked it down. Handoff, ball screen, three. And if, because if they switch, it makes it really hard, right? It makes it really hard when that post player gets a switch. You're either going to get shot on, you're going to get a drive, or you're going to get your roller. So here she fakes the handoff. Let's watch this again. Um, I like this move a lot. And again, this is not a call. This is just this player making this decision. Fakes the handoff and goes right back into the ball screen. Love that. Just so much freedom within the framework of this offense. And these are all just, you know, using, using pistol and getting open looks. Because, you know, teams were struggling to guard it. And again, I mean, having good players obviously helps, but, you know, it's a, it, it's a tough action to guard. It really is. Handoff, ball screen, swing it. Now here, this is our down screen. This is the one time, and even this, and this was a very good team that we were playing, but, uh, you know, they got a little bit lazy. This is supposed to be a sprint into a down screen, but she kind of jogs as she's coming off, and the corner player lifts up. And they just don't guard this well at all. It's not supposed to be that open. But that's why we like stuff to happen on the weak side of the floor. Okay. Um, this is another big part of why I wanted to put this second volume up. Is that we put up, um, we put in something this summer that um, I know is a very common um, action in the NBA right now. Um, and we called this Pistol Up. So what Pistol Up was was the guard we would then this would be a call so the guard is going to throw it to the player in the corner who has lifted up 
Now, she doesn't want to get too close to the sideline because we need space. So she's about foul line extended around the three-point line or maybe even inside it a little bit. We still want action on this side of the floor. But there, we throw it here. And this is going to be a sprint back into a handoff. And then you'll see what happens here. Back into a handoff. And we are immediately setting a flare screen. So it's handoff into a flare for our shooter. Let's watch this again, right into the flare. And that would, I mean, I, I think that's extremely hard to guard. And we ran up a lot. All right, so here you have the option when you're running up, she's caught the ball, to either hand the ball off or keep it. And I like the first time that you run this to hand it off, um, then the defense might start to expect it. But this is really hard to guard. And we're still setting that screen. The post player doesn't know if it's going to be a handoff or a keeper, but it's very difficult to guard. There we go back into it. There's the flare. Doesn't need it. Hits the three. And our post player, of course, is going to roll. There's the keeper. Into a three. I mean, we, we ran this quite a bit. Big, big fan of it. And again, these are just options. These are all options. There's your flare into a drive, into a kick out. Love that getting the whole floor involved. Here's up again. Back to her. There's your flare. Again, so here's this. And you can see me. I Right now I'm clapping because we executed this perfectly. Perfectly. I knew she wasn't going to miss that. So I, I just love it when, when things get executed like that. There's another keeper. I, I mean, actually a handoff and just a baseline drive. We're running up again. There's a keeper. Another bucket. And that was right at the end of the quarter. Okay, so that is, that's some of the stuff that we did in the summer with Pistol. There's a lot more that you can do with this. Um, you know, and if teams are going to try to hard switch and deny you from using that ball screen, you know, you've got your throwbacks. You can throw it to your post player and kind of play out of that. Um, you can try and split and drive. There's a lot of things that you can do to counter that. Um, but it's a very good offense that you can put in very quickly. Uh, we would do a lot of three-on-three three and stuff to sort of emphasize uh, the decisions, but uh, that's pistol. I mean, maybe we'll do a volume three later as we continue to build on it, but uh, hopefully that helps you out, and thanks for watching.